and welcome to the Vention Assembly Series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we're going to cover the configuration checker tool used in the setup process of your Vention machine motion controller. The purpose of this tool is to systematically run your configured actuator through a series of tests to ensure that they have been properly set up. We'll take a look at four configuration errors that people usually run into and see how to fix them. We'll be doing this for our three axis system that we have here, used in our previous video on installing and configuring your machine motion controller. After you've wired your system and powered on your controller, you'll need to find your way to your control center window on your interface of choice. If you're using a Vention pendant, this will be the main screen on boot up. If you're using a computer to connect to your controller, you'll have to navigate to the IP address of your controller from the internet browser. This will bring you to the control center. From here, the steps are identical whether you're using a pendant or a computer. Once in the control center, we'll navigate over to the machine configuration tile. In our case, the basic configuration has already been completed, but we'll run through it quickly. We have drive three set as our Z axis using an enclosed ball screw, a large motor, and a power off brake. Drive four is set up as our Y axis using an enclosed ball screw and a large motor, but with no brake. And drive one and two are set up as sync drives for our X axis using two parallel heavy duty enclosed timing belts, each with large motors. Once you're done with your initial configuration, this is where you'll use the configuration checker. We're going to run through the checker for three different axes, highlighting how it works, as well as showcasing a few common errors. We'll start off by validating the configuration for the Z axes. In this one, I'm going to show two common errors. The first is when the actuators are assigned to the wrong drives, and the second is when the direction of travel is inversed. Under each configured drive, you'll find a check configuration button. Clicking this will run the checker itself. The main window will display the currently configured status of your drive, and the left window indicates the validation steps as well as which step you are currently at. To begin, click on Start Test. If you have a brake installed, it will sometimes prompt you to verify this and ask if it's safe to disengage the brake. From here, the first test conducted checks to see if you have configured the actuator to the proper drive. Clicking on Go will send a command to move your actuator by 100 millimeters. Looking here, it seems like our Y axis moved instead of our Z axis. This means we configured the drives improperly. Going back to the configurator, it will ask if the actuator moved. In our case, it didn't, so we'll click on No. It will then ask if any other actuator moved. Again, in our case, the Y axis did move, so we'll click on Yes. With this, it gives a status failure, as well as the suggestions to fix it. Following these instructions, we'll open the drive settings and swap the drives for our Y and Z axes and click Save. Clicking on the green button below will bring you back to the start of the step. From here, follow the steps to see if the drives have been properly reassigned. This time, the Z axis moved correctly, so let's go back to the checker and confirm to move on to the next step. The third step will verify if the direction of travel has been properly set. Checking on Go will send the actuator towards the configured home direction. Looking at our setup, it seems that it moved towards the end stop sensor as opposed to the homing sensor. This means that our motor direction needs to be reversed. Going back to the configuration checker, we'll click on No. This will give us a prompt saying that the system will swap the direction of the actuator. Confirm this by clicking Go. Verify that the change has been made and redo the check to see if it functions as intended. If satisfied, click on Yes and then Done to continue. The final two steps check to see if you've wired your over travel sensors correctly by sending the actuator to each end of its available travel. We'll start off with the home sensor by clicking Go. If wired correctly, when the actuator reaches the home position, the configuration checker will indicate that the sensor has been properly installed. We'll repeat this for the end sensor. Since it's wired properly, we get the message that the test is complete. Clicking on See Test Results will show you the resulting configuration at the top, as well as what changes were made throughout the checker process. Going back to the main page will show that the check configuration process has been completed for that actuator. Now that we're done with the Z axis, we'll move on to the Y axis. 
For this, we'll show you what happens when the end stop sensors are wired incorrectly and how it's fixed. We'll skip through the first few steps, assuming they've already been validated and begin at step four, which verifies the home sensor. Again, when arriving at the step, click on go to move the actuator towards your home sensor. If the machine reaches the end of travel and triggers the wrong sensor, it will automatically swap your home and end stop sensor assignment and indicate this on screen. Click verify and then go to repeat the check. Now that the sensors have been reassigned, the system indicates the check has returned a positive result and we can move on to checking the end sensor. Following the instructions on screen, we can validate that the system has correctly recognized the end stop. Once complete, we can view the test results to see the resulting configuration and what has been changed. The last case we're going to be looking at is when you have two synced drives but have improperly configured the motor direction. Begin by clicking on Check Configuration to bring you to the checker and select Start Test to run through the validation steps. Similar to the Z-axis, we're going to start by validating that the proper drives have been assigned. The major difference in this case is that the axis is driven by two actuators and drives instead of only one. Let's begin the test by clicking Go. The motors will attempt to move the axis, but since the motor directions are not properly configured, they will push against one another, preventing the system from moving. This will give an error feedback message in the configurator and will bring you to a new window asking you how many motors you have installed for this actuator. Since we have two connected, that's what we'll select. It will then ask if they are properly connected to the proper ports, which we'll confirm by clicking yes. This leaves only one possible issue preventing motion, which is that the motors are attempting to turn in opposite directions. Clicking on go will have the system run through various motor direction combinations until it finds one where the motion is no longer impeded. Once this is done, it saves and applies the new motor direction. Press verify, then go to run through the validation steps one last time to ensure that it's been properly configured. The rest of the process follows the same steps as seen earlier, so we'll end this here. And with that, we've covered the basics of the configuration checker tool. Thank you for watching this assembly video and please do check out the other ones in the series.